uh, recycled plastics of all varying types, predominantly post-industrial material, uh, rejects out of tolerance, uh, wrongly shaped, whatever, and we put it into polymer type, uh, shred, granulate, and put it back into industry. We first approached RAP uh, about six months ago now um, because we we realised that we needed some new plants and equipment. We realised that we needed to expand the, the business to accommodate a, a growing customer base. And it was quite simply to do that of our own fruition, etc. We wouldn't have been able to do that. So we approached RAP to say, well, this is our plan. This is what we're looking to do. Is there any help, is, any assistance there to help us with uh, capital expenditure, etc., etc.? And uh, we've had a, a fund granted to us. Uh, which is going to allow not only new plant and equipment and obviously increased capacity, um, it saves approximately 40 tonnes of waste from landfill per week. All of our material is sold in the UK. It's also sold to uh, UK manufacturers. The help and support from RAP has not only allowed us to grow and obviously in growing attracts new customers and customers that we couldn't previously service. Um, that's point number one. Point number two, it's going to generate over the next, well it already has generated five to six jobs, over the next 18 months that will generate in total 18 jobs. And so I think the benefit is there to see that the, the growth of this business is not only good for our business but it's good for the local uh, employment and uh, because all of our employees to date, every single one of our employees have come from uh, long term unemployment. Lawrence's was originally founded by my parents 25 years ago and they started off with literally one vehicle and 10 mini skips and the business has obviously evolved. Uh, the old site we had was a two acre site, uh, this new site is a 16 acre site uh, but we've also got 206,000 square feet of uh, covered space and to give you some sort of idea what that is that's five football pitches indoors under cover so it's absolutely huge. What that allows us to do of course is to um, literally extract all the materials from the waste streams. We can start segregating the different types of wood so we can segregate MDF, chipboard, uh, clean pallet wood. Uh, we can extract the plastics and the different types of plastics, the hard plastics, the soft plastics. It's quite ironic uh, that we've uh, actually recycled the building. It was uh, an old forge, redundant, and uh, it was at risk of being knocked down. So uh, by taking on this facility and turning it into a large recycling centre, in effect we've actually recycled the building as well. We've had quite a bit of help on the way, particularly from RAP. RAP have been supportive in, in helping us with particular market research, so being able to uh, establish what uh, types of waste are, are around in the area. They've um, also supported us with um, an interim manager and we've had some uh, funding towards some capital equipment, uh, a crusher uh, and a screener. Obviously the funding uh, uh, helps, but I think what's uh, essential really is the, is the level of expertise that uh, organisations like RAP can deliver to, um, to our business. It's, it's helped give confidence to certainly the financial backers um, to invest in these types of organisations and that certainly is, uh, with, with the current banking market, is certainly uh, helping move these things on and speed things up. The uh, decision was taken to move into manufacturing over 12 months ago because of the problems we had in supply chain management, uh, quality issues and otherwise there. So we've now uh, established a full plastic recycling facility whereby we take other people's waste polythene, typically in a baled form. We take it in, we pelletize it, then either blow it into film or cast it into damp proof course. The support we've had has been um, very helpful in terms of accelerating what we've been able to do. We had some setbacks in the first six months of production and we applied to RAP through their interim management scheme to get support 
for a, a manager. Uh, they helped us uh, financially and we managed to secure a very capable manager who came in for a six-month project. We've also had capital grant assistance as well. Uh, that was mainly towards equipment which had been identified as bottlenecks in our production processes. So by that investment it's allowed us to increase the production capacity of the facility here uh, substantially, some fivefold from where we were 12 months ago. Without the support we've had from Advantage West Woodlands and RAP, we would not be able to have made the progress we've made so far and laid the foundation for our future growth in the year to come. There's quite a pressure on Brinton's, as with other companies, for um, our customers, particularly commercial customers, to want to know what they can do with a carpet at the end of its life. And they, would, they want to buy products that have an environmentally friendly end of life solution. And um, we're looking with research to, to make it so that we can find useful applications for recycled carpet waste. One of the applications is for agriculture where wool-rich carpet can be uh, put in a form that's benefit for the soil being um, ploughed into the soil, uh, perhaps instead of uh, for traditional fertilisers. The Environment Agency obviously need to make sure that the soil is not contaminated by what is added to it, and they need to be very careful what can be allowed to the land. Uh, so there's quite a strict and rigorous process in order to find uh, solutions. We need to have a scientific-based evidence to say that it's, it is okay to go to the land and for the Environment Agency to be happy uh, that they can give permission for that to happen. AWM and RAP um, funded some research so that we could work with an independent soil scientist uh, to do research both scientifically um, and also um, looking at land that has already received um, shearings in the past and taking soil samples and checking the condition of the soil. We want all our waste streams to have a useful end of life solution. We don't want any of our waste going to landfill at all. The major challenges that we faced were to do with the expansion of the business. Uh, we first started out in fridge recycling, um, moved into television recycling, and then um, this year we have been wanting to get into waste electrical equipment recycling, that's non-hazardous waste electrical equipment. Um, and we have found that although we managed to secure the, um, the capital for buying the, the, the equipment, um, there was of course an awful lot more to just putting a machine in and, get, and starting it up. There was an awful lot of, um, of periphery equipment that needed um, and infrastructure that needed to be provided and that's where the RAP scheme was of, of tremendous help to us. There are two main areas which sort of interlock really um, in the, the help that they gave us. Um, first of all, they gave us help in, um, in capital expenditure which enabled us to increase our capacity. But I suppose of at least as much help, probably even more, was the um, very, very inspirational idea of, of giving us help towards um, recruiting a sales manager, which has been nothing short of transformational uh, for this business. I mean, he's only been with us um, eight weeks now, and, and the, the difference is, is noticeable already. Um, almost from the first week he was bringing in um, new business. Um, it's enabled us to look at the future now uh, and, and plan uh, our growth rather than just taking growth as an ad hoc experience. <laughs>